I think a good explanation requires a good understanding of your audience. Just like if you had a calculus teacher uh, giving a lecture to kindergartners that, you know, explaining some concept technically that's an explanation, but it doesn't really matter if the audience can't make use of it. And a lot of machine learning explanations are somewhat like this and that we can say, hey, look, the, this neuron activated really highly. Uh, you know, this feature on this layer seems to be important. It really doesn't matter if you don't have the depth of knowledge necessary to be able to do something useful with that or be able to understand what the implications of that feature activating highly are. Or, you know, like to, to even maybe take it a, a step deeper, right? If you talk about a lot of the things that an actual, you know, ML architect is going to be paying attention to in developing a model, you might see that your gradient norm is performing erratically across epics, right? And now that piece of information to anyone other than like an ML scientist, uh, meaningless, right? Like what on earth do I do with this, right? Um, but to, to someone who is actually tweaking the architecture, right, that's a very helpful thing. And and I think this then turns into the crux of it is that it very clearly indicates a next uh, path, right? A next step. Um, and I think that that becomes sort of the core of explainability, at least from my perspective, we need some falsifiable definition, right? We're, we're really, really back to basics here. Um, but I think it really comes down to what control you are giving someone over this algorithm. Uh, and I only think you can say you've successfully delivered an explanation if the person can then change the operation of the thing that they're they're working on. You know, I, I think that is the true measure of an explanation.